Mars, too, is mostly a desert. And the other planets in our solar system all seem too hot or too cold for liquid water or life to exist. All except one, Earth. Those deep blue oceans and spiraling clouds of vapor mean water. And that makes life as we know it possible. Water, the life giver. With man's careful guidance, it turns prairie into paradise and desert into garden as it has here in Southern California. Every day, each of us uses 10 times our own weight in water, directly or indirectly. Nowhere else on Earth do so many people depend so completely on water brought in from other places. Where does it come from and how does it reach us, this water of life, this water for Los Angeles? When the tiny Pueblo of Los Angeles was incorporated as a city in 1849, it had just 1,600 inhabitants. Most water came from the Los Angeles River, diverted through open ditches called zanas. Some 50 years later, and 100,000 people strong, there was a growing demand for water. So in 1902, the city of Los Angeles bought the existing privately owned water system. William Mulholland, who as a young man had worked on the early ditches, was picked as the first superintendent of the new municipal water department. It was Mulholland who looked beyond the horizon and saw the Sierra Nevada mountains harvesting abundant water from the clouds. Now the small Pueblo of Los Angeles has grown to become the nation's third largest city. And the city water system has grown as well. The Los Angeles Department of Water and Power, now the largest municipal utility in the country, provides a half billion gallons daily to nearly three million people. Where does all the water come from? Some starts as rain falling in the mountains and in the San Fernando Valley. Think of the valley as a large natural basin. Much of the water that falls there eventually filters down some 200 feet to the underground water table. This natural storage area, containing enough water to supply 400,000 people, is tapped by wells. They pump 70 million gallons a day into a collection system, and from there the water joins the distribution system. Also, storm runoff is collected behind several flood control dams, released to river channels, and diverted to spreading grounds. There it filters down into the same natural basin with local rainwater to be pumped out and used later. The Colorado River was recognized as another source of water for Los Angeles by Mulholland back in the 1920s. Additional water comes from the Colorado River Aqueduct, supplied by the Metropolitan Water District of Southern California. And even more water is available from the State Water Project through the California Aqueduct. 
North of Los Angeles, Castaic Lake receives as much as a billion gallons a day from the California aqueduct. These sources provide most of the supply for the rest of Southern California, but only a small part of the water for Los Angeles. Most of our water comes from the eastern slopes of the Sierra Nevada mountains, flowing by gravity through the city's own aqueducts. The snow-covered mountains that William Mulholland first recognized as a major water source early in the century provide recreation for thousands of visitors. When the snow they ski on melts, the water runs downhill some 300 miles to help fill the needs of Los Angeles. The city of Los Angeles owns some 300,000 acres of valley floor in the Owens Valley and Mono Basin. This huge watershed is managed by the Department of Water and Power. Much land is leased out, some for growing alfalfa, some for grazing. Leases provide that at least 75% of the land be kept open for recreation. Advertising signs and billboards are prohibited from most city land. Heavy industry and commercial development are restricted, but scientific research is encouraged. Much of the land is left untouched. Wildlife ponds are protected to encourage natural growth of birds and fish. Near Bishop, a sanctuary has been established for the Owens Valley pupfish, a tiny rare fish once nearly extinct. Hatcheries managed by the California Department of Fish and Game produce millions of fish to be caught later by sportsmen in the upper reservoirs and streams of the Los Angeles water system. Crowley Lake, largest reservoir in the area, holds roughly half the total storage capacity of the DWP reservoir system. And on some days, it seems to hold half the fishermen in the state, too. School and youth groups are encouraged to use the valley as part of the continuing multiple land use program. Careful land management assures that this scenic valley will always remain unspoiled and accessible to all. Water for Los Angeles starts as melting ice and snow 300 miles away above the Owens Valley. Let's trace its journey from Tioga Pass and Levining. Its first resting place is Grant Lake Reservoir. Next, the water moves through a tunnel under the Mono Craters, joins other runoff in the Mammoth area. Then it rests a while in Crowley Lake. The Owens River carries it past Bishop and Big Pine into the Tinnemaha Reservoir. Just south of Tinnemaha is the point where Mulholland rerouted the river to form the original aqueduct. In the shadow of Mount Whitney, highest point in the Sierras, are the Haywe Reservoirs, a resting place for water at the end of its turbulent, churning trip down the Owens River. From here to Los Angeles, the water is fully protected from human contact, fishing, and water sports. Later in its journey, it will be chlorinated to further ensure wholesomeness. From Haywe, Los Angeles water can continue in two ways, through a new aqueduct completed in 1970 or through Mulholland's original aqueduct. The water travels to Los Angeles without pumping. It takes a roller coaster ride all the way south, passing through deep canyons like Jawbone. 
The ups and downs of the waters had dropped 6,000 feet en route to Los Angeles. Provide another plus. DWP hydroelectric generating stations along the way produce enough electricity to supply about 275,000 people. Just north of Los Angeles, the water may rest in reservoirs like Bouquet before bursting into the San Fernando Valley in a rushing cascade. There, it's joined by water from the other aqueduct. Some of this water is set aside in large reservoirs for emergency uses. Additional water for day-to-day -day use is stored locally, often in residential areas, in nearly 100 reservoirs and tanks. Here, what appears to be another home is really a pumping station. Through careful monitoring, the water distribution system is balanced hour by hour. Recorders chart changes in flow at key points and pressure drops can be detected easily. Half a billion gallons a day. That's a lot of water and it takes a lot of people to manage it well. Water system employees build and operate nearly 7,000 miles of water mains crisscrossing the city. Others are at work modernizing dams and reservoirs. Some DWP employees, like meter readers, work close to home, and others work high in the Sierras. This hydrographer checks the snowpacks to determine how much water will be available for tomorrow. Meanwhile, today's water is sampled continuously at checkpoints around the city. And every week, over a thousand tests are made in the DWP lab to ensure the wholesomeness of our water. But what about the future? At the Department of Water and Power, we're continually looking for ways to improve the quality of our water. Careful planning, management, and use of modern water treatment technology will ensure good quality water for tomorrow. Water, the lifeblood of our city for industry, business, and homes, starts here. We must use it wisely, drop by drop, to ensure an adequate supply of water for Los Angeles.